Hey guys, what is going on? My name is Tom Spark and welcome back to a video. Today we're going to be checking out Start Mail again. Uh, I last reviewed this one around a year or so ago and I've kind of come to terms that I like it more than I did back then. And this might actually be my email provider I'm going to use and I'm going to discuss why in this video. All right guys, so let's get into it. Are you guys ever worried about getting doxxed? I know I am, and that's why I use a service like Incogni to make sure no one could find my IRL information if they find my name. A service like Incogni goes to all the available data brokers out there like White Pages and these different websites. It will tell these websites to remove your information and it saves you tons of time. Use my link in the description down below to get 50% off Incogni as you see here on this website to get this deal. This is my top rated data broker removal tool. It's around half the price of competing services like Delete Me and it has a better interface to boot. So thanks for checking out this one and let's get back to the video. So guys, right off the bat, why do I like Start Mail? Well, it's definitely got a couple cons, but it's also got some really good pros. One of the cool things about Start Mail, I would say it's kind of key defining feature, is that it does come with unlimited email alias support. This is really nice for preventing um, spam and those kind of things, because you can make as many email aliases as you want, give them to certain websites, and they won't have your core Start Mail email account. So that's definitely something very solid. Another thing I look forward to nowadays for email providers is that they have been in business for a long time. And I actually think Startmail is actually one of the oldest encrypted privacy based kind of email platforms there is. It's older than ProtonMail and some of the other, other options out there. Additionally, you know, look at something like Skiff. It lasted like two or three years and it's already gone. Startmail, I think, is run a little bit differently. And we'll kind of discuss why in this video, I think, um, but also how. So there we go. But with Startmail, it's kind of like your run of the mill or kind of standard encrypted privacy driven email platform. It has no ads, no tracking, um, send encrypted emails and so on as monthly and annual plans. Now, Startmail doesn't really offer a free plan, um, unlike some of the other options like Tuta and ProtonMail and stuff like that. But actually, I don't think that's a disadvantage. If anything, if anything, we've learned from Skiff offering a free plan and making it too generous can actually end up with a business going under. Um, take for example, if you made a free plan with Skiff, you migrated all your accounts to it. And then two, two or three years later, like what happened, they pretty much just sold their entire company because they never actually had plans to make money, never had plans to be sustainable. They just planned to make this big platform with tons of users and technology and then just sell it off to the highest bidder. And that's exactly what happened. And that's really what you don't want with an email platform. And honestly, some of the ones that do offer free service uh, to free, I kind of worry about the development kind of costs and kind of sustainability of those platforms. So I kind of think that's why I've kind of come around to, especially after Skiff, something like Startmail. Basically what it does is it has a free seven day trial for you to try it out. And then you'll be charged a decent kind of price for the services offered. I think that is probably the best way to do it, especially if you want something that sticks around. And if we look at the history of this as a platform, it has stuck around. So it's around 350 a month, which is very affordable. And you could go annually for even cheaper around 250 a month. Now, keep in mind this 50% off is with my discount link. I'll put that in the description down below. I'm not sponsored by Start Mail to make this review. They haven't told me I had to say anything like that. I am an affiliate though, like I am with pretty much every VPN and a couple other different encrypted email platforms. So if you do want to get this, this discount and you want to help support the channel, click on the link in the description down below. However, if you don't want to help support the channel, you find that this review is not objective, then you don't have to use that link and you could just go to the website yourself at startmail.com. So thank you for the support, but let's get into some of the nitty gritty. So Startmail, I would say, is very good in a lot of aspects. If you look at kind of the main page here, it's very user friendly. And that's one of my main reasons I kind of plan on recommending this more, especially to people who are migrating from different platforms like Skiff, Google, and stuff like that. I would say probably out of all the different platforms out there, it does have a very good user experience from the get go. And why is that? Well, it has these little tabs up here that pretty much tell you exactly how to do all the fundamental things. And this is really good because I think using one of these platforms can be a little bit confusing for people trying to gain more privacy and features than something like Google, you know, that is kind of collecting everything about you. 
especially with stuff like AI now that is really kind of being implemented into some of those things. You don't really know what kind of information they're going to be doing with that. Um, so if you click here, let's say you say you're using Google or something like that, you just click here. It's just going to automatically take you somewhere to start that migration process. Very nice. Um, additionally, if you want to use it on mobile, um, you can start using it from IMAP. Now, I would be, I'm going to be honest here. I would say this is one of the cons of StartMail, depending on your use case. If you're someone who really wants an application, a fully developed application for mobile, StartMail is not going to be it. And that's one reason I kind of turned away from it before, because I kind of find it lazy. However, that said, if you're someone who uses basic mail applications on your phone, this is not going to be an issue for you. And you might even prefer using this method of IMAT. Basically, you can use the, any mat, um, the standard kind of email applications and then just connect it through IMAP, pretty much just your credentials and stuff like that. And you'll have start mail built into your core email application. So there's a couple different options out there. Additionally, one thing you can do is just set it as a bookmark and they've natively designed um, the website and email experience to work kind of within your browser, just like an application. So it's really not that big of a deal. If you're looking for that kind of application feel, you could use a shortcut or integrate it within another app. Outside of that, you can also enable 2FA and create email aliases. So there you go. It's as simple as just going to this page, create an alias, and there you go. Another cool feature is it can automatically deactivate after a certain time. So you're not gonna have all this cluttered email aliases all over the place. And that's a really nice feature and a good job by Startmail. You could also have a burner alias, which is a temporary one that'll disappear after an hour. So that's also a really cool feature. It really seems they've put some thought into this email aliases. And it's something I definitely do appreciate because it's a pretty cool feature and very nice. We could also kind of navigate to the account settings, a couple of other different options. Um, I kind of do want to kind of see if you could kind of change kind of the color scheme. We basically have display name options, um, two-factor authentication, there we go, dark mode. So there you go, you got your dark mode, kind of nice purple theme. Some other applications out there like Toots and Notes I've noticed kind of have some kind of weird glitches with dark mode that kind of annoy me a little bit, kind of annoyed me more and more. Um, this seems to work a little bit better. There's not really any glitches in the colorations. So that's definitely something solid if you kind of are picky about those things. We have some contacts here, um, aliases, mail. Now, start mail is not going to be like a full replacement to like your Google suite. You know what I mean? It's not going to have like the calendar and drive and stuff like that. It's really just kind of focusing fundamentally on the mail kind of stuff. And honestly, to me, that's not really a bad thing. I don't necessarily want to have my documents, my calendars, everything within one ecosystem. If that's something you want, then maybe Proton is what you're looking for, but you are gonna be paying for that. You're gonna be paying more. And Startmail is charging you for strictly email and it's a fair price for that. So I think it's... Uh other cool things about Startmail that I really appreciate, for example, are this block feature. Not every encrypted email platform offers this. Being able to block a sender is something that I use all the time. Um, so, you know, when I'm not using these kind of things, if I use just like my basic, um, you know, email for my YouTube account, since it's like associated with Google because I use YouTube. But this is a feature I really like on Gmail, and I'm glad to see it here. Not that many other encrypted off offerings offer this. I remember Skiff kind of offered something like this, but you had to click two more times and it didn't always work. I like how they have a block center feature, and this is clutch. This is something I really like. You can also report phishing, stuff like that, flag the message, or just immediately move to spam if you want so definitely very solid there additionally you can add your own domain support if you want to with this setting um, make some more filters if you want to combat more spam you could access your subscription settings to set up contact groups um, access the encryption options depending on you know threat model folders for different things this is kind of cool you could create custom and subfolders i've never really looked into this that much but definitely a pretty cool feature i never really thought about with other applications mail settings and stuff like this so everything is very well out and very simple and easy to use which is something i appreciate you can also see the storage option so we have around 20 gigabytes which is plenty so definitely very solid so guys, in conclusion, why do I like Startmail than some of the other options lately? Well, one, it's very easy to use, um, very easy to kind of integrate it within your kind of ecosystem to migrate things. They make it super easy to see that, um, you know, I really like that block feature. Some of the filters and stuff is good. The settings are very easily navigatable and laid out. The interface works fine. 
The dark mode is one of my favorite ones, less glitchy than some other ones I've experienced. The pricing is also very affordable. If you don't, uh, I would say some of the cons though related to that though, um, you know, why not start me on? Like I said, this is an objective review. Well, if you're strict about needing an application, this might not be the one to do, but if you don't care about that, if you're fine to use just like a little shortcut, a little home screen widget that will automatically open up your browser and kind of like be an application anyways, or if you want to integrate it into something like your, you know, your iMail or Android mail application with IMAP, that will also work very fine. But that is something that's kind of up to you. Um, another thing, like I said, if you want that ecosystem approach, you want your drive, your calendar, everything on this ecosystem, this might not be the one for that. Maybe check out Proton. Um, but if you're willing to pay less for one good service, I think this one is the one to go for um, since it is a little bit cheaper. So for example, if you get the same plan, um, this has um, 15 gigabytes, Startmail has 20. Um, Startmail also has unlimited alias support. And this one, none of these plans actually do have that. This is already $2 a month more expensive um, for month to month. And if you go to 12 months, it's still $4 a month, around 50 bucks a year. And Startmail is gonna only really be around 250 a month for that plan. So definitely around half the price with more storage and unlimited email support. So it's definitely a better value. Keep in mind, you will have to pay extra with Proton if you do want that drive support, password manager, and so on. You really only get the calendar as a bonus. So calendar, I guess if that's really an extra value proposition to you, might be worth it. But I think for me, Startmail seems the better offering right now, and that's the one I plan on using going forward. So anyways, guys, thanks for your subjective review. Check out my link in the description down below if you want to get that price on Startmail. Help support the channel at the same time. Win-win. If not, just go to the website yourself. Um, let them know I sent you if you want to uh, do that for some reason. But anyways, guys, I'll see you in the next video very soon.